And who do we got with us today? Uh, you got Ron Huckabee returning for his second interview. Uh, a little further down the road, under my belt, um, living the life at the shelter uh, down St. Vincent de Paul, in St. Louis. Bring us up to speed on everything well, that's been going on since the last time. There's we been spoke. a lot of changes, um, good and bad. Um, right now, the shelter's shut down, so everybody's trying to have to find a place to stay. And, People are living in bandos that shouldn't be, and different breed of people have come through, which always changes the atmosphere. And as of we speak now, there's a lot of violence, there's a lot of stealing, uh, there's a lot of threats, and emotions, very angry emotions that are coming through. And some more than others uh, are testing. And you know, I'm, I ask myself today, is this God, and why? How many more tests do I have to go through? So my mixed emotions was towards my father or towards what I've done uh, of 18 months and, and what I, I wish I could change, but I can't. Um, like we, I ask myself all the time, um, but I realize now being older, acceptance it's one of the hardest things in life for all of us. Change is good. Change is good. But I've been tested with the good, the bad. My inner self, my outer self, about my choices, about my moods, my strengths. And what I find still hard even to this day, is how to control these different emotions and do it in a nonviolent way, and it's scary. It's scary for me. What happened with the inheritance with you and your sister, man? Like, well, touch on that a little Basically, bit. my sister's married to uh, chief of police, uh, I believe New Baden or New Athens, whatever. I don't know what Chuck is now, but he's a police officer. He was in Collinsville Police Force for 29 years. My sister's a nurse. Well, you know, cops and nurses, they mingle. And, but my sister's one of those that just doesn't really associate with the family anymore. Um, after my grandma left her 980,000, and her being a nurse at SLU, um, and Chuck being 29 years on police force, and uh, now he's chief of police in some town, um, they are living very comfortable. They've always lived very comfortable because Chuck and his brothers uh, started rehabbing houses, had little businesses. Uh, Chuck actually owned a couple of Winnebago's that he was leasing out. You know, the half a million dollar, quarter million dollar. Yeah, he uh, leases them out for the season. People rent those from him for the season. I think he's got three or three of them. Was your sister only one your grandma? Uh... <laughs> Left her inheritance too? Um, no, she left me some, but I told her I really didn't want any. Uh, my sister got 980 and I got 250, which I spent a hundred and a half on my house, car, my truck, furniture for my house and things for my kids, including my, you know, I paid 15,000 to be four felonies for off my uh, oldest daughter. Allison, so she wouldn't have a jacket because they felt she was too young to wear that jacket. She still is. And, uh, you know, I, I want the best for my kids. But I'm glad they're not here. And I, and I don't wish a shelter on any body. But you don't have to stay where I'm at. I mean, I've done this to be close to my father, but it's been trying. Uh, people have been shot, people have been stabbed, people have been beat up just to block over. Um, just, you know, people have been robbed now, lately. And um, if someone actually tried to extort me over $10, I said, well, good luck with that. And I told him, come get it. What's that about? Is it a bully running around? Oh, yeah, well, 
Boy, look at that. He takes. I finally, I finally told him yesterday, I oh, don't nobody can dodge. That's, let me explain how it went down. Guy owed me $10 and tried to pay me off, pay me off and some dope. And I said, I want that. I'm on with $10. Well, I got that well. When you get that, that's what I want. I don't want crack. I don't want ice. I don't want, I even like weed, but I got weed. I don't need it. So, I want my $10. And I owe Miss Pat $10. And, then, and I have this black guy just steady. And finally I told him, told him, I said, look, dude said I owed him $10, but I didn't. He owed me $10 and tried to pay me in some dope. And I told him no. And so when you got my $10, pay me. I don't owe him ten, so you got it back. I go, my bad. Exactly. But I'm only gonna take so much. And it's been going on a week. And this guy ends up, the same guy talking to me about $10, ends up robbing another guy. And his girlfriend robbed another guy, a preacher, punched him and took his money. And punched I mean, him and took his punched money? Punched him and took his money. His eyes swelled shut. So when you see picture, you gotta see the picture. Cause you need to take a picture of that. You'll see him this morning, guarantee it. Happened about uh, one o'clock this morning, I just passed him. And I just seen him and he didn't have that. Big old, where his eye was shut. I said, who did that? And he told me. Yeah, and they robbed him of his $100. And I'm like, I, I, I wanted to retaliate. Being 57, this man probably's in his 30s, and he had, and he did it for his girlfriend, so then go smoke crack. No, no, it's not a reason to rob. It's a reason for you to go get a job and and, and, and kick the crack over up to the side. But if you love her, you guys just need to go somewhere else. We don't need it down there. Mr. Uh, Ronnie, explain to us how, if you can, how does one inherit a quarter million dollars and end up in the shelter or end up on the street? Like, how does that work? Um, like, what was the process? What was the uh, what was God. the transitioning like from the Me quarter being million? Being with my ex-wife for 17 years, being married for a year and a half. Her trying to get my house, I had to sell my house, my brother's in my house, which he just sold for a hundred and, for a hundred and twenty, listen. Where were you living at, Mr. Ronnie? North 74th and Balboa. Okay, gotcha. Four bedroom, three bath house. Yes, sir. My, my had 2,300 square feet. Mm -hmm. um, my driveway was 150 feet long. I had a basement and four, two rooms on the bottom, two rooms on the top. The woman I was with had three boys. So the house, for, it was four of us, so it fit just perfect. I had two high school sons, uh, uh, Devin and Derek, who graduated with honors at uh, Bubba West. And uh, Derek is an engineer in the Navy. Devin is a uh, medical tech in the Army. They're both E5, E6s. They've been in only four years. They, they had skipped. Derek, being the engineer, tested off the charts. That's how smart he is. And uh, never had a problem out of them boys. All growing up. His mom was in the military for 14 years. Got kicked out for the use of math met me when I was a union carpenter. I didn't do math. I smoked weed. And I told her, I met her, you can beat this. Try what I do. And now she smokes weed. And she did quit. She said she lost her career in the military for 14 years, but turned around, found her, found her place in life. Not military life, but civilian life. And that was changed. I showed her how to be a civilian to where after she mastered it, she didn't need me anymore, which is fine. I still care about her. I still care about her boys. But life goes on. So, I have two daughters, 
one Allison that is 27 that uses Finny. Um, but I'm going on up still, traveling up to Boston to go save her life and make her change. I was sitting with her. She will, she will quit. I will wean her off until she quits. And I don't care when she starts shitting herself. I told her, that's okay. I brought you in this world. I've wiped your ass before. And this time, I got your sister. Because I'm going up to Boston to get both of my kids. I want them both to change. And I want to help them change. I want them to go forward in life. And I feel with the correct guidance, someone else to help them make choices and get them in the right path, right direction. Like Sarah, um, just got her GED. So I'm going to have her take some type of training courses, correspondence courses. I, I don't care if it's being a secretary to uh, rebuild an engine, but I need them to have actually um, some type of trade. And the more trade you have, the more versatile to fit in wherever you're at. So, me, um, having a GED, I put myself through college. I've got 14 years, maybe almost 15. What college did you go to, Mr. Um, I went to uh, Kaskaskia, I went to uh, SWIC. Uh, I, I have a two-year degree in carpentry. I have a two-year degree in business and communications. Um, I sell small, but I do business classes. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm a carpenter, man, I'm a union carpenter, and I'm a waiter. Um, you know, I fed them. I'm not going to be climbing roofs all my life and building houses. And it's easy to weigh tables. And I make good money. Um, I used to work for Good Up and Hearts. I, I worked for Ruby. I opened a Ruby Tuesday in Fairview Heights. I worked at um, Fisher's, Augustine's, the Waltons, um, the Higher Regency. I did McHenry Collins. I used to wait on um, the 13 um, Collins uh, board members there. I did that for the higher agency. Um, they pay me ten thousand dollars cash. <laughs> anyway, but uh, no, um, it's time for me to go help my daughters. Um, so they're up in Boston. Me myself, I'm not gonna make it anywhere. So uh, I don't know. I think I'm gonna go up there and maybe scoop them up and either go one way or go another. Um, but I'm getting there to go give guidance. So in life, I believe, it's never too old, you're never too old to be there for your child and never forget it until you know for sure, heart, mind, and soul, body, that they are going somewhere for it. Because my dad has my sister that's 41, doesn't even have her GED yet, living in his house with no job. I have a problem with that. What's the animosity between you and your dad, man, if you could take us through that? Because I remember you touched on it earlier. He, but... um, he lost his wife, COPD, and I don't miss her because she wasn't nice to me. So when he said a tear, I said nothing. And I, I feel sorry for her because he didn't love her all he wants. She was a very evil woman to me, and I'm down here so he lives because he wasn't nice to me and she's not here anymore and guess what? He still has to answer to something, how he was. So when I look at my father, I know I allow him to live. Every day I'm not around him. But like today, I got up in a bad mood and I'm afraid I'm gonna go to Pablo and I'm gonna snap his neck. And I don't know what that is, but I don't know if it's because I got 18 months of probation for just going to see him to make sure he's still alive. And I get 18 months, that's, that's, that's just. They gave you 18 months yeah, probation 18 months, just right? trying to go see your dad? Yeah, just my dad. What was that about? Violation And you're of off probation today, right? Or uh, I've been it's off over since, uh, yeah, since 25th. Okay. And. Uh, How does that feel? It's good because I can leave the state and go see my daughters that need me. I don't have to stay here. I was gonna stay here until my dad passes, but 
he's still kicking. And I'm not mad about it, but I know if I stay, it's not going to be good for him or me. So it's best I leave as soon as possible. So. Why do you think your dad was not nice to you? And was were you because, the only one he wasn't nice to? Because, listen, he made the choice to side with his wife. Because when you don't back your wife, what do you get? You get static. And she gave him static, and he decided to change the venues. So now that she's not here, he has to answer to my static. And I don't feel sorry for you. In fact, some days I look at you, and I wonder why I still allow you to live, Daddy. Because I've done so much time in my life behind bars because you and your wife, that me snapping your neck now and having to go through 20 means nothing to me. I could probably do a stand on my head. You know that? Because I know everybody, Daddy. That's pretty sad. That's pretty sad. I've been going in the county jail here, at St. Clair County Jail, for, for the last 40 years, probably. My booking number is 108. You know what? In fact, I think they're on 50, 60, 80,000 right now. And I was the 108th person. How you like that? That's something to be proud of? No, it's not. But I was in that place like a revolving door. And you know what? Because I pray, I had to find something to do. And I'm not, I'm having religion nothing. I just believe there's a power greater than myself that it's got me here. Dealing with this for some reason. And why? I don't know, my mom died with 1.3 million. And, and, and off yourself at the age of 52. Man, I've I've had money. I've been in mansions. I've been on yachts. I've been laid in almost every state. I mean, I've done a lot of things. I've done a man. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of things I've done. But you know what? Regretting, regretting any of it? No, I don't. We are who we are because we because we went through the things we did, and maybe that's what has helped me make it through even this. St. Vincent de Paul is not some halfway just shelter. We got ex-felons, we got organized crime, drug dealers all around. Guys pulling out guns, pulling out knives, people ODing, um, people getting addicted. Um, people thinking, yeah, man, I mean, I think we need to do a little bit more investigation on how we actually do conduct. I believe they're understaffed. I think they need counseling. I think they need one-on-one -on -one time with the doctors. Uh, I don't care if they're therapists, um, hypnotherapists, psychotherapists, but government, the, the health care, we need to do more. How long do they shut down for? Um, all the way till September or something. And they still feeding. Yeah, still feeding. They're just, they're not housing. No. So, being that they're not housing, a lot of people are out on the street now, oh, yeah. and they're and they're upset, and now they're turning on each other. And they're stealing, and they're robbing, and they're catching cases because they're they have no place to go, literally. I've, I've been, I, yeah, yeah, and I've been there, and you know, and my my little sister can stay with my father and not pay rent and. I've, I've, I've offered a parent and everything, and uh, it doesn't matter. Acceptance. I told my father, you should have never had me. When my mom wanted to abort my father, and you knew I was yours, she told her no. I think that was a mistake. Because if you think you did everything right with me, Listen, I was a bad kid. 
I would have killed a kid if he was like me. I would have been in trouble. I couldn't have handled a child like me, like you did. So, hats off to you. I would have killed him. I'm not gonna lie to you. I would have killed him. I was a bad kid. And nobody deserves a bad child, so. I, I have to get to my daughters to make sure that she's okay. And it's time for me to go. But, this has been definitely a learning experience. Some good, some bad. But change is good. Yes, sir. And if there's uh, anything you want to share, Mr. Ronnie, that you haven't said in closing, while we close out, um, now's the time you can say it. Never take anything for granted. Never take anything for granted. You never know what the next door is going to open. Nothing's ever promised. You know, you have to make your life be what you want. Never give up. And, you know, and yeah, you're going to have your ups and downs. And I don't agree with everything here, and I definitely don't agree about all the choices I made since I've been here. I could have done much better. I don't have to be here, actually. So, I'm here because I can get, I can get along with the rich or the poor or wherever. You know, people wonder not why I'm here and not in Belleville or Fairview or Fallon or Scooter. I don't know, because I'm not, I've lived around these people all my life. I mean, being around for four, to know that I've known this guy, this black man over for 30 years, 40 years. <laughs> There's not a lot of white people in Bubba to say that. I know probably half of East St. Louis. But I know there's not a spot in East St. Louis I ain't want, or been. I've been from one end. To, to, to all the way to the river and over the river. So. We appreciate you taking time out with us this morning, Mr. Ryan. I wish people the best. Thank you so much, man. You know, always remember, you got the choice. You have a choice. It's, it's, to give more thought, I hope people take the time to give more thought before they make choices. It sucks when people react before they actually think it all out. Like me. I had plans to do that guy's roof. I didn't go over there. I told him. I was going to get him dig on I mean, you need a carpenter. Mm -hmm. And that's money in the bank. That's probably almost 10 square. Mm -hmm. And that probably paid me $1,000. Probably do it in two days. Three days. Tear it off and put it back down. Place all the bad wood. And, uh, you know. Go where the money's at. It ain't down here. I mean, you can't make money. Don't get me wrong. But you always want to go where money's at. Always want more. Always want change. And always move forward. Never be stagnant. You know? Like this little thing. You know what this does? This thing I came up with yesterday collects rainwater. And then you let it just sit and collects rainwater. Then you can hook up the hose here and here and uh, use it to water your plants. So I like donate I was taking this, and I'll turn this into a tub. Hot tub, baby. <laughs> yes, sir. Turn it into a hot tub. It's gonna fill it up with water, and I was gonna let it sit all day in the sun, put a mesh over it, and get in at night. I was, that was gonna be my my tub, my shower. <laughs> I ain't lying. I started thinking, I'm like, man, you know, so I started getting these crates. I was gonna build me some walls. I'm gonna have me some floors. Put some sheeting down on top of it. Well, I was on it. I was like, look, I was even gonna have a slide in my pool. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you slide on into my bathtub. I knew what I was doing. But see, now this is walking the streets. I've come up with this stuff a little bit everywhere. These sodas containers. These are actually actually juice for a fire to heat up wood. And plastic burns and drips. These burn forever. And the lady at the store over there goes in and dunk. I go, you mind if I get one? No. She don't mind. But she does mind when I use the water. I did a little laundry last night. Her, her, her light comes on. Because she saw me. I waved at her. Yeah, I rolled to the front and the light came on. I waved in the front. Yeah, lady, I'm using your water. So what? I need a little bit. 
you see the situation. But I told her, I clean her lot, I pick up her lot at night, people throw trash in it and stuff. I cleaned all this lot for her. Uh, there's been a lot I've done. And Jimmy, I've given all his stuff. So he gets all of it from me, it doesn't matter. But I try to uh, help whoever, whenever, however. Um, fix people's houses, give people money. Um, I walked down State Street last night just to stretch my legs. Just go say hi to a guy uh, that owns the liquor store on the other side. And his name's Mike. I've known him 40 years. Um, he needs me to come do some work at his mom's house that, that lives in uh, down by Deerberg, in Fairview. More, to, more going into O'Fallon. Been to his parents' house before. Um, they live over by Deerberg's too. So uh, I've known them 40 years. And, you know, this guy over here wants me to give him a proposal on that roof. Um, and I just do that sometimes a day. Anyway, there's work down here. Um, you just got you know, go through the cracks and uh, pick and choose. You can make money though. I don't see why people aren't trying to do more than what they're doing, but to each his own. It's not a bad place to be, but you actually just have to, you know, just a different, different thing, man. You know, it'll work out. If, if you keep your eyes open, keep your ears open, mouth shut, pay attention. You can learn a lot, or you can lose a lot. The streets are not a place to actually be playing. You should look at everything every day. And serious as one to the next. I don't know why they stare at me a lot. Oh, check this out. I did come up on Santa Golf Club. Look at that. Look at those golf clubs, baby. Then we're going to my dad's. I'm going to show them these. He's a badass. I got a titanium one, which I know is good down. Because that is the strongest. I am, it's titanium. I've got, look, man. I got these uh, drivers. Man, look, this one right here is the titanium one. And this is my driver for a lot. But I picked this up, and I'm like, you know, titanium is the strongest metal. Hardest metal. I don't know what these are worth, but I got these donated. I had, these are all wood. These are wood drivers here. Every one of these that has a cover is this one. It's a cousin, this one, my bad. Oh, my life. I'm just tickled to death. These are wood ones. These ones right here. So, all these are gold tips. I don't know what that means. I'm definitely going to have to call one. I know it were plenty of golfers. I just, uh, I'm <laughs> my man, look at him. Yeah, see, my dad's brother was a golf pro. He actually, uh, yeah, he owned a golf, he owned a golf shop. He took guys golf. <laughs> that's how he sold the equipment. He, yeah, that's going. Um, let me see. We, I did hit, I did, oh, I did, I did come up on this net, so I am going to go fishing. I did come up on this little room, man, it's too. Yeah, that's going too. Um, let's see, some of this, I, I, I got pots, pans, and stuff, uh, because I plan on doing some fishing. Uh, I mean, I am a, a really good fan. I never use a net. If I don't bring them in, and they weren't deserving time. This is a crock pot. The restaurant over here gave us food. They gave us this. We got ham and beans. We got muscacholi. We got uh, dumplings. Oh, that's what I got the other night donated from the store. It's been really nice. Um, I got a lot of clothes that I had to take to my dad. Uh, they've just been down here. And St. Vincent Paul used to do laundry. And now they decided they're not going to do laundry anymore. So, 
I've kind of just let that build up a little bit for a while. And uh, I've been slowly taking my things away from St. Vincent and Paul. Why? Because I'm leaving the shelter. Why? Because my time is done and it's time to make changes uh, as soon as possible. And that's to continue my journey to my daughters and make sure that their life is going the right way and I'm there helping. I did come up on a hammock though. That is going with me. <laughs> because I did and uh, what was it? East St. Louis Boy Scouts donated me a tent. They came here. I couldn't believe it. I said, you know what? We have something for you. And they brought tears to my eyes. I said, really? Because they saw me pick this lot up. And he asked me why I was doing it. And I said, because I live here. This is my front yard. And no, I don't appreciate people driving by leaving their trash here. And I think everybody who lives here should feel that way. In East St. Louis, we've become beautiful. I've seen some really nice houses, really nice clean streets. And I think if everybody pitches in, they can all get it nice again too. And uh, I said, now, I don't care where you live. It doesn't have to be all about the money. You can do a little bit here, a little bit there, and uh, make some changes. Change is always good. But don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. That's what most people are. People are afraid of change. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm scared all the time. But it's called a learning experience. I didn't really learn all that until later on. This uh, little travel I've had through the same as the ball. I've met good people, bad people. And it's just the way it is. Uh, that's how life comes at you anyway. You know, we don't know what's coming. It's just all about us dealing with it and how we deal with it and making the choices that we do. So I hope every just everybody in life, I hope everything goes good for people. It's just never just remember I think it's best to take a little bit more time, take a little thought, and make the right choice for people. Okay. Yeah, um, anyway, that being said. You're going to meet a million personalities from all of them, no matter where you go. Um, and me, I am a minority down here, but it doesn't change my outlook on how I deal with it, how I deal with life. It is all about choices and how you carry yourself and how you present yourself. Always remember that. Try to keep positive attitude because it's sometimes really hard. Very trying, very testing. But, you know, if somebody can get a little out of this somewhere down the road, then I did my job. Because I learned a lot for myself. Uh, my limits, which was amazing. Very testing, very trying, still is. I'm, I'm ambitious to one point to want to see my daughters and nervous at the same time. But I shouldn't be. Because who's running this? I am. What's that, man? We appreciate you sharing, Mr. Okay. Ronnie. Thank you, man. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. There'll be a third version. Yes, sir. Might have to send that to you in the mail. We're looking forward to that. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. There it is. Oh, we're getting, boy, there's a lot of people.